Well, you read my review. Uh, what, what impressed me was I don't think I've seen a Star Trek film feel so much like the original series, like this one does. Mm -hmm. Was that always the intention, or was that kind of something you were going for? When yeah, you... that was kind of mine and Doug's remit to ourselves. It was like, let's create a film which is kind of like an episode of the original series, but, you know, in context of a modern, contemporary, spectacular blockbuster, what a summer film kind of has to be these days. Mm -hmm. Let's have our cake and eat it. Let's, let's marry year one to year 50 and create a sort of Star Trek for the ages. That was what our intention was all along and um, what we really shot for. And you both have grown with these characters and, and obviously people have kind of embraced these characters. What has been the challenge for you to keep it fresh and to keep it Keep it interesting. Yeah, look, I think it's important, especially in the 50th year, if, if we do not continue to uh, it, it keep it fresh and, and offer up new material and then obviously keep it socially relevant and at the cutting edge, which is what Star Trek always was, uh, then we would be doing the, uh, a huge disservice to the legacy of, of Gene Roddenberry. Um, so the challenge is always uh, to do better than what we've done uh, in the past. And in, you know, in this film, obviously, um, the, the different sort of elements that we bring forth is a, a deepening of relationships. The relationship between Bones and Spock, for example, t is taken to a territory that I, I don't believe has ever been seen before. Uh, and of course, we, you know, on the social boundaries, we're you know pushing the pushing the fronts of having uh, you know Sulu's character um, be gay. And for all of us, we're very proud of that. We're proud of the fact that there is a generation of young men and women who are celebrating the fact today that they are represented. And that is just uh, that is just wonderful and, and a major blockbuster film. You, and that was handled really well. Mm. I credit you because I, we kept hearing news about it. And we kept, you know, obviously they were talking about it. Yeah. But the way you deal, dealt with it is so simple and. So just, it's not a big deal. Well, it was always supposed to be that, and it became a big deal before anyone saw it kind of thing because yeah. of for various reasons. But, yeah, it was always our intention to make it just seem like it was part of the fabric, and it, as it should do. And, um, and I'm really happy we did. And I'm, I, 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 George's comments were kind of slightly whipped up into a, a slightly more of a spat than it was. George yeah. and I spoke about it all the time, and he knew we were going forward with it, even though his reservations were completely valid you know I think I think it's something he would have liked to have done with Gene Rodenberry back in the day mm. something they probably wanted to do sure. but were prevented from doing so because of the social situation at the time people were definitely not ready for that they were hardly ready for the interracial kiss you know that the, 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 some networks wouldn't even show that you know and, and Gene Rodenberry is a very very smart guy who wanted to you know affect social change in an intelligent way and you do that carefully and you do that with intelligence and I think you know if George and Gene could have done that back in the day, they absolutely would have. It was never us saying Gene should have done that. Yeah. He probably wanted to, you know. Yeah. Well, and things have changed so much. And uh, hope, but, yeah. but again, I think what what made what I liked about this too is that it doesn't feel like the big block. It feels like a blockbuster from the ages where you would actually take time to actually develop characters. Mm. It's not all action. And I think the big summer blockbusters have become just action, action, action. Yeah, well that's, you know, and, and it's the difference between that and Star Trek, you know, if it, Star Trek is about character. It has always been about a cult of personality. You know, you tuned in to see how these characters who you loved uh, overcome, you know, any given challenge. And if you don't have that, then you just have a vacuous, sci-fi uh, special effects extravaganza and, and that's never gonna fly with a modern audience. They're far too smart for that. Favorite Star Trek character, all time, and favorite Star Wars character? Easy for me, Chewbacca and uh, Scotty. Naturally. Oh, no, not me, I would probably say Spock. Spock, yeah. okay. Yeah, Spock was my too. Uh, I think it has to be Spock, uh, and I think for Star Wars, um, it's it's not on Carplet. It's not on Carplet. <laughs> uh, I'll go with Han. Han. Yeah. That's interesting. That's great. Uh, I just want to say also congratulations on Force Awakens. I've probably dedicated about 600 hours of my life to it so wow. far. And that goes for my so son, sorry. too. So did he. Who's so <laughs>